Good morning to you. We welcome you to the Lamont United Methodist Church service this 16th of August. As you know, Pastor Oh and Sung Woo are in South Korea with family during this time of loss. Our prayers go out to them and their family. In Pastor's absence, Mark Hugelman will be delivering today's sermon. And now, please settle in as Bob Gerges leads us into worship with the prelude. Hi everyone, Janice Stelter here. I'd like to start out with thanking everyone who helped put this service together. Uh, my husband Bill, Bob and Sue Gerges with the prelude, um, postlude and prayer, um, Leslie Ramos and Phil Ramos with the praise band and all the work that they do to get those songs prepared. Um, but at this time, I'd like to begin the call of worship. Friends, we know what God desires of us, that we do justice and love kindness and walk humbly with God. We gather this morning to remind each other about that, to remember that now is always the right time to do these things. So with thanks in our hearts, 
Let us worship God. Let us bow our heads for the opening prayer. Almighty and most gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and for calling us here to your place of worship. We gather to praise your name, for your faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Signs of your faithfulness are all around us. Love, mercy, forgiveness, new life, and the gifts of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Help us claim your faithfulness as we seek to increase our faithfulness to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. My name's Glenn Kerr. Thank you for joining us this morning. Today we're going to talk a little bit about forgiveness. Now I know I am nowhere near perfect, and I know you're not perfect either. None of us are. Jesus wasn't perfect. So as we think about something that we've done in the past that maybe hurt somebody's feelings, we need to think about what we need to do in order to make that right. So the first step is, number one, to acknowledge that you've hurt their feelings. So going to them and saying, I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. And get that that we say we're sorry too, it's important. Um, but it's also important to say, can you forgive me? And that's kind of hard because it kind of puts you out there a little bit. And I'm sure that sometimes people worry that maybe somebody won't forgive them. But God teaches us that forgiveness is a really important part of our lives and that God loves us unconditionally, and our family will love us unconditionally. So the next step would be to think about what you can do to make it better. So say for example, you said something that hurt someone's feelings, 
and you just really didn't think about it much, you could go to them and say, I am so sorry I hurt your feelings. Next time, I will think before I speak, and I hope that you can forgive me. The next step would be to also think about when somebody else has done something that hurts us, that we need to remember to forgive also. So if somebody says something or does something that hurts our feelings, we need to, even if they don't ask, to say, you know, that really did hurt my feelings, but I forgive you. It's really hard sometimes for people to ask for forgiveness. So it's important for us to just offer that. And that's hard, it's hard for me to do that. And I think it's hard for everybody to do that, but it's something that we need to remember. Finally, sometimes we do things that we feel so bad about, it's really hard to let go of that. So it's important to remember to forgive ourselves also. God taught us that love is unconditional and that he has grace for us. And so we need to remember to give that grace not only to other people, but also to ourselves. So let's think about that this week as we go along our week and we make mistakes because we will. I will. I'm absolutely positive I will. So just go through the week thinking about what can I do to make those mistakes better and how can I make the people around me feel better even though I may have said or done something that needs forgiveness. Thanks for joining us. Have a good week. The scripture lessons this morning are found first in Psalm 133 and second in Romans 11, 1 and 2, and 29 to 32. Behold how good and how pleasant it is when we dwell together in unity. It's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Romans 11, 1 to 2a and 29 to 32. I ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people. For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Just as you were at one time disobedient to God, have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience. So they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound all men over to disobedience so that he ha may have mercy on them all. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hello everyone. Bob and I miss you and look forward to seeing you all again soon. We know our Lord is always listening to us and sees everything that is going on in this world. In our busy lives, we sometimes forget he's always there. We often don't take that moment to stop and say, what now, Lord? Because we think we've got all the answers, but we don't. But in this time in our worship service, when we're together yet separate, we can speak our concerns and lift up our joy so our church family is able to pray for those things we need help with and share in our joys. Will you pray with me now? Dear Lord, we're gathered this Sunday here in our virtual world with a growing list of concerns. We pray for our world with stress and chaos around every corner, Lord. 
We pray for doctors and researchers to find an effective vaccine, cure, or a solution to this terrible virus that has taken so many lives and affected everyone else. We pray for kindness to overcome destruction, and we pray for leaders to lead with clear direction, fairness, and with compassion. And we pray, Lord, for our church family, for the people on our prayer list that are grieving the loss of a loved one and the pain from that loss that is so hard to bear made more difficult because we can't be with one another to share a hug or even a smile. We have others who are undergoing treatments for illnesses or tests to see what's wrong. We have moms and dads worried about their kids going back to school and wondering what that will look like. Or children who are old enough to understand what's going on in the world but not sure how it affects them. Lord, we pray for people out of work and perhaps having struggles navigating the unemployment system. And we also pray for others who are joyful to be starting new jobs, but also concerned how it all works out in the midst of a global pandemic. Our list of concerns is long, Lord, but in the midst of this agonizing 2020, there is much to be grateful for. People are still having babies. Kids are still graduating. <clears throat> Families are finding creative ways to be together. Beautiful sunsets still exist. Music still surrounds us, and every day we wake up breathing is a gift. So, dear Lord, please hear our prayers and help us to celebrate our joys. God, grant us mercy and guide us to the simple pleasures. And help us keep a smile on our face and a song in our heart. In your name we pray all these things. And together we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for tuning in today. Yes, it's me again. I'm filling in for Pastor O oh because she and Siang Wu had to travel to Korea to bury Sung Siang Wu's father. We extend our heartfelt condolences to her and her family and him and his family. Pastor and Siang Wu are amazing people. They have interesting lives together. They have brought the message of Jesus and Christianity to us, and Pastor O has tried to help us understand and deal with the tr stressful elements we encounter in our lives. They have been good for our congregation, and I hope they will, will return to us soon. So, where are we today? <laughs> well, it's Sunday. And normally we would be sitting in our favorite pew, enjoying Bob's music, hearing our choir or the praise band sing joyful songs, listening to scriptures that are germane to the sermon, sharing announcements, passing the peace, and finally having a sermon to make us think about God and the kingdom of heaven. However, this new normal we find ourselves in today has made our regular Sundays impossible. Who would ever think that our living room or office would become our sanctuary? But even though we cannot do many of the things we used to do, there are many things we have not, that have not changed. We can still communicate with our family and friends. We can still drive places. We can shop anywhere food is sold, and even in some larger stores now. We can go on vacation, although the mode of transportation has changed from flying to RVing and many organizations and clubs we belong to are still chugging along. The saddest part of this pandemic is the social distancing. 
seeing someone face to face, hugging someone you care about, just hearing an unmuffled voice and seeing an unmasked face has become rare. But this will change. We will adapt. Our children will go back to school and our church will reopen. We are, after all, human. We need to move on, to discover, to explore. And we need to thank every day God for the lives we have. The worst part of what we have been going through since March is not just the pandemic, nor is it the protests or rioting that has swept across our country, but the divisiveness, distrust, and even hatred that too many people feel toward each other. These ill feelings need to change. The United States is an interesting place, and since February, it has become even more interesting. Our nation is and always has been made up of de many different elements. We are extremely diverse. But up until recently, our diversity has kept us separate. It has not been appreciated, but rather feared. Each element has been apart from every other element. Political parties are separate with no unity except during elections, when we choose one person over another according to what we think is the correct path. Races are separate. Religions are separate in their interpretations of the Bible and Scripture. Philosophies of life are separate. Educational objectives are separate. Art, music, literature differ in their views and expressions. There are many more examples. So I guess the United States is not so very united. Can these disparities somehow be eliminated? Can we somehow make all this diversity agreeable to all humans? Too many people would say no. This is the way it is. This is the way it always has been. We can never unify, never. <laughs> Our glass is half empty and getting emptier. Is there any way we can unify? Maybe there is. In my messages, I always introduce a book that seems relevant to the idea I'm trying to share with you. Today, the book I'm touting is the Bible. In my last message, I discussed Adam Hamilton's book, Making Sense of the Bible. He discussed the organization of the Old and New Testaments, laws, history, poetical writings and prophecies. And I tried to put in perspective where the prophets say we are. As a church, we are united in our beliefs in friendships, and in our faith, especially our faith in God. As a community, we are moving forward, following safety guidelines, our restaurants are open, and the car shows are happening each Wednesday downtown again, and our schools are looking for a safe way to reopen this fall. We have not violated the guidelines of having large gatherings without face masks. Lamont wants a normal where our citizens are safe. We are united in those measures. Moving up, our state is struggling. Large groups gather. There are still bouts of looting and mob activity in Chicago. The pandemic still rules our behavior. And although Illinois has one of the smallest percentages of corona outbreaks, we are still not completely safe. Our state is not united in adopting measures to eliminate the pandemic. We need to come together there. Now, moving up again, the United States, the land we love, still has a 25% of the world's new cases of corona and 25% of the world's COVID-19 deaths. That's totally unacceptable. We cannot travel to Europe, and we must quarantine ourselves for two weeks, even after visiting certain states. The differences in race came to a point and became obvious after the murder of George Floyd and the protests and rioting that followed gender, gender differences, abuse of children and women, all this awful side of humanity is finally out for all to see. And attempts to understand and change these horrors are finally out there. We are in a time of turmoil and trouble, even if we don't see it firsthand here in Lamont. But even though our community is not directly affected, we are part of this country, and we must come to terms with it. Why can't America be more like you, Lamont? <laughs> this might be a good place to segue into the scripture readings for this Sunday. Psalm 133 is attributed to King David. He wrote it shortly after being crowned king of Israel. 
the warring factions were united and David rejoiced. The divisions ended and the discord was finally over. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I sincerely hope we are moving in that direction. The first word, behold, is a command. I hope that soon we will behold a change in attitude and accept that we are all the same, even though we look different, have different skin colors, have different religious beliefs, work in different fields, have different philosophies. We can unify as beautiful humans who believe that everyone is the same. It seems like a paradox, doesn't it? We are all so different. How can we be the same? That will take some work, but our country depends and thrives on change. People need to work together for the good of all. I sincerely believe that good changes will happen in our country and our country will become better and be more like our church, our congregation. We are good people. So our scripture readings are good news, encouragement for what is coming. In Romans 11, Paul writes the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Paul states this salvation is a promise that God made and his promises are irrevocable. God will never forsake his people and we are his people. The last time I talked with you, I discussed the organization of the Old and New Testaments, the works of the prophets, which are the last parts of both testaments foretold of cycles of trouble, falling away, repentance, and salvation and rebirth. I said we are most likely in the realm of repentance. We remember that God has the power of salvation and we will receive this salvation if we have faith and continue to believe. Never stop believing. Here's the point of all this. We are different. We will always be different. But it's wonderful when you find someone you love and you share your love with and, and it moves out from you. And it finds others who share your beliefs. In Romans, we learn that God's promise of salvation is for everyone. It is an irrevocable promise. The final message in Romans is for us to live together in harmony. Remember this is also the message from the scripture readings from, uh, from Psalms. Old and New Testament share the same message. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Jesus Christ, that together you may with one voice glorify God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There are many ways to respond to God's faithfulness, love, and mercy in our lives. We come now seeking to be faithful disciples of Jesus and to respond to God through our tithes, gifts, and offerings. There are three ways to give. Mail it to the church at 25 West Custer. Use the app Give Plus on your mobile device. Or use the Lamont UMC website. Just click Online Giving and follow the steps. Let us now bow our heads for the prayer of thanksgiving. Dear God, we thank you for setting us in communities. We thank you for families who nurture our becoming. We thank you for friends who love us by choice. We thank you for companions at work who share our burdens and daily tasks. We thank you for strangers who welcome us into their midst. We thank you for people from other lands who call us to grow in understanding. We thank you for children who lighten our moments with delight. We thank you for the unborn who offer us hope for the future. In Christ's name we pray, amen.
Our dismissal today is from John 20, 21 to 23. Jesus said, Peace be with you. As God has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive the sins of any, they are not forgiven. God now sends us, just as he did Jesus, to forgive. When we forgive, all are set free. We've received the Holy Spirit. God has breathed us into the world, grace-filled and free. I say to you, breathe in all judgment and breathe out God's grace. Breathe deeply now and go forth.